tonight. More Atlantic developments possible in the next few days on our Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 5th. Right now, Lisa struggling on in the Bay of Campeche and Tropical Cyclone 4S in the Indian Ocean. Weaker as well now down to a Tropical Depression and the remnants of Martin ex-hurricane in the far North Atlantic, not far from Greenland. Uh, 85 storms have formed so far this year and this is the Atlantic Ocean on day 158. Lisa there in the far southwestern corner but that 40% chance there which is now rising chances of a tropical cyclone uh, not far from the Bahamas and could track through Florida next week. In the eastern Pacific day 175 of hurricane season here and pleased to report once again that there are no areas of interest but watch for the moderate range as something may start to come out um, of this big Atlantic mess that we're currently watching as well the east pacific that would be in the western pacific we're still tracking this 10 percent chance pretty much over the um uh, the southern islands i forgot the name of those islands already uh, i keep thinking of the marshall islands but it's not those ones it's the other set of islands guam and span i can't believe i've forgotten that name and 4s down in the southern part of the indian ocean there well to the west of the cocos islands the mariana islands is what i was looking for um, a very surprising word escaping me there just then, but there we have it. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery. This is what the Atlantic is looking like right now, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that Lisa was quite a bit towards the northeast and moving northeast, but that's actually a wind shear that's just pushing the higher clouds away. You can see the convective top still sticking out down towards the southwest there. That's where the center of the storm actually is, and it's a massive tri-air surrounding it. Into the eastern Pacific, things looking rather quiet here. Dry air dominating once again, uh, with a few little exceptions, a few areas of thunderstorms out in the intertropical convergence zone, and you can get another look at Lisa there on the right-hand side of that imagery. Um, and into the full imagery there, some last visible images before night fell over Lisa not long ago, and you can see exactly where the centre of it is, some low-level clouds still there, telling you pretty much where the centre of that system is. Down to a tropical depression, 30 mile per hour winds, fairly weak, and it's not going to be with us as a tropical depression for much longer. It is hanging on uh, with tiny amounts of convection and tiny circulation at this point. It is a very small system. Out over the rest of the Atlantic, you can see the doldrums down there in the eastern Caribbean through Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, and maybe something will form out of that mess. Um, I think it's currently to the southern part of that that we're looking for this potential generation of a system system or two because there's another one up there that uh, a line of storms in the central Atlantic there um, the National Hurricane Center have 10% on that I believe and up in the high latitudes there's what's left of Martin still looking pretty decent when you look at the rotation of that thing um, <clears throat> still a quite powerful storm its pressure estimate at the moment is around 948 millibars um, and its wind speeds are down to 60 miles per hour wind distribution uh, wind pressure relationships change all crazy up there. Western Pacific looking like this right now. You can see that little bit of uh, convection blowing up um, down towards the southwestern side of that proper center area near the Mariana Islands. And elsewhere in the Western Pacific, things looking ger generally fairly quiet with a few little thunderstorms popping up over the Philippines. The Indian Ocean, you can see 4W, uh, 4S dying off a little bit to the southern part of that big cluster of storms. Uh, it's still going uh, and it might still have a future yet, but at the moment it's not looking too hot at all. And in the Australian region, things looking fairly quiet here, just a front or two running through the Coral Sea and a little thunderstorm blowing up uh, into the uh, western part of Australia, into the Northern Territory. Further east, a few thunderstorms blowing up east of Tonga. <coughs> Pardon me, let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures right now. The 
Eastern Pacific is still touching 30 degrees Celsius in one or two spots off Oaxaca particularly uh, and further out to sea a little bit more as well. The Atlantic Ocean still looking favourable in many areas on those sea surface temperatures at least. The loop current still active and the area where Lisa is right now still pushing 28 degrees Celsius just a little bit less right now. Caribbean Sea still very warm through the Lucayan um, Islands looking decent there as well. Looking into the Indian Ocean, you can see how warm it is here. Still very warm in the North Indian Ocean still and the southern part catching up. Still 28 to 30 degrees generally as a rule there. The Western Pacific also really good temperatures still in the Philippine Sea as you'd expect. Uh, but pushing 30 degrees just to the west of the Mariana Islands for that potential cyclone. And even warmer waters in those lower latitudes, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. We often see late season low latitude startups. For storms that go on usually to, to affect the Philippines, that could be something there to look at later on. Seas of temperature anomalies looking above average in the Western Pacific overall. The La Nina still quite prominent and in the Atlantic uh, we're still looking at pretty much above average there as well uh, in all of the areas concerned at the moment when we're talking about those potential systems coming up. Oceanic heat content, well there's none in the Bay of Campeche, which is good news for Lisa watchers in the, in the Caribbean there, still very uh, decent oceanic heat content values as well. Eastern Pacific, there's not much left there, and in the Western Pacific it's still looking fairly okay, uh, a few spots, but actually the hot spot really in the tropics is west of Guam, so once again if that system continues westwards, it's not forecasted to develop, uh, but you never know. Let's take a look at the computer models first. The enormous mass that is X Martin there and then gets uh, sort of pushed away by another extra-tropical storm. It sweeps through a uh, northern part of Ireland, uh, through Scotland, and then sweeps round northwards and northwesterly there towards Ireland. Storm force winds probably up to around 50 miles per hour for Ireland and Scotland, up towards Iceland, probably 50 to 60 miles per hour sustained winds up there for a time as well. In the rest of the Atlantic, look to the Central Atlantic there, that potential system developing. GFS is pretty much on board with this, possibly becoming a cyclone, at least the nameable one, and then sweeping up north and then northeast. And then that second system that develops in the Sargasso Sea, the broad wind field becomes a hurricane as it approaches Florida on day five. So that will be something really interesting to see. Other models aren't fully on board with this yet. Uh, but one or two, I mean this is the GFS, but I think the ICOM was also on board with something like this. ECMWF has something much more broader and weaker. South Indian Ocean, look towards that system there, 4S. Does it have a future? Maybe a little bit as it tracks westwards and then peels northwards slightly near Diego Garcia. North Indian Ocean, at the end of that five day period, a little disturbance starting to develop there as well, east of Sri Lanka. So there could be more tropical rumblings going on in this region in the next five days. It feels like everything's waking up late on in the year, doesn't it, at the moment? Uh, but there we have it, those two potential systems right now. And this is the rainfall expectations for the next seven days in the Western Atlantic. And you can see over parts of uh, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Virgin Islands, uh, maybe getting up to three, maybe four inches of rain there, 100 millimeters. And then as that storm pushes into Florida, if it happens, we could be looking at over five inches of rain for some of those areas creeping into some of the yellows. Uh, so for a large chunk of central Florida, that could happen. But the track of that potential system, obviously it hasn't even formed yet. So it really isn't set in stone at all. It could pass further south. It could pass through the Keys and into the the Gulf and then God knows what will happen since it's November who knows with steering currents all over the place at this time of year or it might even move further north and do a bit more of a recurve who knows it may not even form yet but it is a 40% chance now so chances have risen still most of the heaviest rain stays out at sea which is the good news there longer range day 5 to 10 you can see what happens with that hurricane pushing through Florida and then turning back on itself in the Bend region and then sweeping off along the coast of the Carolinas. And what do we have down there in the Eastern Pacific? Another system forming there, a hurricane no less, which eventually makes landfall in very similar area to the last two, Orlean and Roslyn. Uh, we wouldn't want yet another one doing that, would we? Uh, category 2 peak there, possibly Category 3. Uh, would be a very bold prediction for so late in the year. I'm not so sure about that at all, and it's not been marked yet, so keep watching. 
the Indian Ocean there, looking back at that North Indian Ocean system, a cyclone landfall, I think that might be Tamil Nadu, um, and then it pretty much dies off very quickly. A weak to moderate tropical storm if that happens, a fairly broad one though, looks like it has a lot of uh, bands to it if that was to happen, but it is in the long, getting towards the long range, medium range, um, so I wouldn't put any bets on that one just yet. That's all the serious stuff done with, so we can take a look at the Force 13 merch store, scan, uh, scan the code, and you can take a look at all of our uh, items, as well as uh, full season individ individual storm animations, bespoke on request, and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt, still available for however long we're waiting for Hone, quite long. In the silly range, this is day 10 to 16. Look what's going on here in the Eastern Atlantic. Is that another system forming there? And it looks like it is to me, and maybe even another one after that as well. Extra Tropical Origin might have a little chance there as it pushes towards the east. So maybe another double system forming there. Two different systems in the Atlantic, quite possibly in the long range. This is long range, so I wouldn't put any credence to this just yet. That goes to show just what might happen in the Atlantic this late season. That would be something to talk about if we had four systems potentially in the next 16 days. Central Pacific throws up a shocker as well. Is that Hone? We've had false alarms like this before. I'm not even sure that's east of the International Dateline, but it was quite close and becomes a tropical cyclone into the Western Pacific and then shoots offwards north and then recurves. Is that potentially another system at the end there? I'm not sure, uh, but there is that one. Long range, we've seen things like this before. I don't think it will happen. I'll say that right now. I don't think that one's going to happen, uh, but there we go. Long range, Hone spotters might have a little glimmer of hope. And in the Western Pacific, the South China Sea particularly, early on in that long range phase, uh, another typhoon, possibly typhoon forming and hitting Vietnam, borderline typhoon there as it pushed inland uh, around about November the 16th or 17th, I think it was. So still quite a way away from where we're at right now. Uh, there it is once again, that would be a landfall on late on the 16th into the early hours of the 17th if that was to come to pass. But once again, very long range, climatologically feasible, but at the moment we just can't really say. Well, Hurricane Week is something that we can talk about because that's coming up at the end of the month. We start November 28th with more fantastic videos and fun stuff throughout the whole week. Hurricane information and education and all kinds of other stuff and entertainment um, that's coming up that whole week. Meanwhile, on November 5th, 2019, we had Super Typhoon Halong, and super it certainly was, with estimated winds of at least 190 miles per hour, an extremely, tremendously powerful storm to go along with Hagabis that happened earlier on. Um, and we also had plenty of other storms active too. Maha was peaking as a Category 3 just before being sheared away to oblivion as it got closer to India. We also had Tropical Storm Nakri and another Tropical Storm that was formerly Matmo that was about to become Bulbul. Wow, that was busy. Well, back to this year. The next name on the Atlantic naming list right now is Nicole. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Seymour, and in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. And if we're waiting that long for Hone, God knows how long it'll be for Iona. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Yamaneko, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Mandus. So we could see one or both of those coming up in the next two weeks, if models to be believed. And in the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, we're still waiting for Darien as well. Uh, they didn't pull the trigger on 4S. The Southwest Indian Ocean, Chiniso, and in the South Pacific, next stop is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.